So now we are going to determine the lateral force analysis procedure that we are going to use in our um, competition. So the lateral procedures can be categorized into two, which is the linear and nonlinear. The linear analysis can and the nonlinear analysis can be also subcategorized into two, the static and the dynamic. So let's proceed here in this um, graphical presentation of the seismic analysis. So the seismic analysis can be categorized into static and dynamic analysis. Okay, so static analysis here. Static analysis and the seismic analysis can also be subcategorized into two, which is the linear and nonlinear. Okay, so for static linear, that is what we call the equivalent static method, method or the lateral force method or seismic coefficient method. So this will be the method that we are going to discuss here in our discussion. So it is a static linear uh, procedure. Okay, and also um, this type of uh, analysis procedure mostly is used in uh, low rise structure to mid rise structure, and it is the easiest type of analysis compared to the other type of seismic analysis procedures. And also, this type of procedure is the one being discussed in the undergrad uh, of the of our course undergrad degree of our course okay so next is the um under the static analysis is the nonlinear analysis so that is the pushover method and for the dynamic analysis again we can categorize the dynamic analysis into two which is the linear and nonlinear for the dynamic analysis linear that is the response method or mode and next is the linear time history method so it's a dynamic analysis with that is approached linearly okay next is the non-linear dynamic analysis so this is the more um more difficult uh, sorry the most difficult uh, type of analysis in seismic analysis because it will need the help of a computer tool and also it will need um, add more information or more um, earthquake ground motion okay data to conduct this type of uh, this type of analysis uh, it is very detailed uh it is a very detailed analysis that will result to uh, errors if you are going it cannot um it is avoided to do this manually um we have to use a computer tool to uh, do this type of analysis because of the thousands of data that you will need okay so for dynamic and nonlinear, for dynamic nonlinear analysis, it includes three, uh, four, four types of analysis: the nonlinear time history method, number two, the displacement based method, number three, the energy based method, and number four, the capacity based method. So these are all nonlinear dynamic uh, analysis. So here in our discussion, we are only going to discuss the equivalent static method or lateral force method or seismic coefficient method that is also in our code. So the code is only detailed, has only a detailed um, discussion in the static linear. Okay. Okay. But before we start our discussion for the lateral force procedure, okay, um, we need first to identify the effective seismic weight or W that we are going to use in our competition of the base shear. So as you can remember, um, base shear 
is equivalent to a certain percentage of the seismic weight. Okay, so the greater the amount of the seismic weight, the greater the amount of the base shear. That is why for high-rise structures, it is a challenge to make the structures lighter, uh, lesser weight, okay, to decrease the amount of base shear, to also um, decrease the amount of the members or the decrease the weight of the members and also decrease the uh, cross area of the structural members because as you go higher and the construction methodology of your uh, building will be um, it is very hard to install the structural members if it is uh, has a big or has a greater amount of uh, gross area or weight so as you, as the structure goes higher it is a challenge to decrease the uh, seismic effective seismic weight or to make your structure lighter okay so for the effective seismic weight it is the say dead load okay it is equivalent to the to dead load so seismic dead load w is the total dead load and applicable portions of other loads listed below so all dead loads in your structure is considered now as your seismic weight but for number one in storage and warehouse occupancies a minimum of 25 percent of the floor live load shall be applicable so if your structure is a storage or a warehouse you need to add 25 percent of the flyer uh, floor live load number two a uh, partition load is used in the floor design so if you are going to use a partition load in your floor design um the partition load should not be less than 0 0.5 kilonewton per square meter okay number three the total weight of a permanent equipment shall be included so if it is if there is a permanent equipment in your uh, structure um it should be included in the computation of the effective seismic weight. Okay. Um, based on our NSCP, we have three types of analysis procedure. We have the simplified static found in Table 208.4.8.1, the static found on 208.4.8.2, and the dynamic found on 208.4.8.2. Three. Okay. So the NSCP also has a guidelines of which analysis you are going to use. Okay. So let's go back to the figure uh, a while ago. So for static, okay, here for static analysis, for static analysis, the code is referring to uh, this type of analysis we have discussed before or the equivalent static method or lateral force method or seismic coefficient method and for the dynamic analysis the code is considering um, referring to the pushover method response spectrum method uh, or li and linear time history method method and the and also the nonlinear dynamic analysis so those other types of analysis here in our uh, figure is referred to as a dynamic analysis by the code. The only static analysis referred to by the code is here, the equivalent static method or the lateral force method. Okay. So the simplified static is, from the term simplified static, it is a more simplified uh, computation of this static procedure. So it is used for structures of occupancy category 4 or 5 so buildings of any occupancy not more than three stories in height excluding basement that use light frame construction so when you say light frame um it does not include the reinforced concrete construction so number two is other buildings not more than two stories in height excluding basements so for static analysis, we are going to use the static analysis or the static lateral force procedure for structures regular or irregular in occupancy category 4 and 5 in seismic zone 
2. Um, regular structures under 75 meter in height with lateral force resistance provided by the system listed in Table 2811 except where Section 2.8.4.8.3 Item 4 applies. Here. This item here. So if the regular structure is under 75 meters in height, okay, you may use static analysis. But if the site location of your structure is in soil profile type SF, you may not use a static. You will proceed to dynamic analysis. Okay. Number three, uh, irregular structures not more than 5 stories or 20 meters in height. So for irregular structures not more than 20 meters in height, you may also use the static analysis. Number four is the structures having a flexible upper portion supported on a rigid lower portion where both portions of the structure considered separately can be classified as being regular. The average story stiffness of the lower portion is at least 10 times the average story stiffness of the upper portion. And the period of the entire structure is not greater than 1.1 times the period of the upper portion. A separate, considered a separate structure fix at the base. Um, most designers is preferring to use the static analysis because it is a lot easier to perform and also it does not require um uh, it will not you require you to uh, gather um, earthquake data or earthquake ground motion parameters which is very limited because we have very limited amount of recording instruments so dynamic analysis is used if the simplified static and static analysis procedure is not allowed. So for structures 75 meters in height, um, you will use dynamic analysis. So structures having uh, irregularities like the stiffness, weight mass, geometric vertical irregularity. Okay, you will use dynamic analysis. So, and then, number three, structures over five stories or 20 meters in height. In zone four, okay, not having the same structural system throughout their height. Okay. And number four is uh, structures, regular or irregular, all structures located in soil profile type SF that have a period greater than 0 0.7 seconds. So, the analysis shall include the effects of soil at the site and shall conform to Section 28.5.3.2 Item 4. Okay, so, in this discussion, we are going to discuss only the static analysis.